Black holes are perhaps the most nightmarishly fascinating features of our universe. Like long, dark tunnels to nowhere or giant garbage disposals, these mysterious fixtures in space exert a gravitational pull so gripping that nothing close by, not even light, can escape from being swallowed. What goes in never comes out. For this reason, black holes are invisible to the eye, as lightless as the empty, dark space surrounding them. Scientists know they exist not because they can see an actual hole, but because a black hole's tremendous gravitational clench affects the orbits of nearby stars and gas. Another clue is the detectable radiation emitted as gas that's being sucked in is superheated. In fact, these strong X-ray emissions led to the discovery of the first black hole, Cygnus X1, in the constellation Cygnus in 1964. If all this sounds like science fiction, watch on. It's only the tip of the cosmic iceberg. As scientists are discovering, black holes are even stranger than science fiction. Believe it or not, some scientists and researchers believe that our entire universe is within a black hole. Tales say if we were to somehow breach the event horizon of a black hole and survive the journey into its interior, we could access new and unimaginable realities, dimensions, and truths beyond the ken of our myopic ape senses. We might even come across Matthew McConaughey in a 4D library from 2014's Interstellar. It sounds fanciful, even ridiculous. But in some ways, it's not only plausible, but solves a lot of problems with physics. So what if we, and our entire universe, are inside a black hole? What if the edge of the cosmos that we can never reach is actually the event horizon of a black hole we could never breach? Join us as we dig into details of the latest theory that the Big Bang could be wrong, and we might have been living inside a black hole all this time. Many people have likely wondered if the Big Bang started everything, what existed before the Big Bang? This question is practically identical to its theological version. If God made everything, what made God? Some suggest that we just have to accept that we'll never understand the answers to such questions. After all, even the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful telescope in history, can see all the way to 100 million years after the Big Bang but it can't pierce the first moments of existence. We know that the Big Bang happened about 13.7 billion years ago, by 10 to the power of negative 36 seconds after the Big Bang or one trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, the universe underwent an incredible growth spurt. During this burst of expansion, which is known as inflation, the universe grew exponentially and doubled in size at least 90 times, what happened immediately after the explosions is called the Planck era, the earliest known period of time. According to the theories of physics, one second after the Big Bang, the heat of the universe caused atoms to collide with enough force to create a 10 billion degree soup of neutrons, protons, electrons, positrons, photons, and neutrinos. Essentially, cosmic inflations created a soup of subatomic particle plasma. It appears that this is what gave rise to dark matter, and likely the phase in which matter gains superiority over antimatter. Within the first 300 seconds of the existence of the universe, the elements hydrogen, helium, and some lithium form from the protons and neutrons. This process is called nucleosynthesis, and is a theory that accurately predicts the abundances of elements and isotopes found in the early samples of the universe, like some of oldest stars. This verification is a strong indication that our model of the universe is accurate. 300,000 years later, when the nearly uniform soup cooled, atoms formed other nuclei. Photons ceased to scatter through space, turning the prior opaque universe into one with visible light. Those same photons, the actual afterglow of the Big Bang known as cosmic background radiation, 
can still be observed today. About one million years after the Big Bang, we enter a period called the Dark Ages, which are known as the final frontier of cosmology. Little is known about this period, except that is, was the period before the first stars were born. The Dark Ages are thought to have lasted about 100 million years. Then, 10 billion years after the Big Bang, dark energy, a mysterious force, starts to accelerate. After that, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, we reach our time today. As far as we can tell, this is an accurate portrait of our early universe, but the Big Bang picture is incomplete. A piece of the puzzle is missing, and this part is the earliest moments of the universe. That's a pretty big part. What was before the Big Bang? Some researchers postulate that the universe existed as a single, infinitely dense point called a singularity. That singularity ruptured and hasn't stopped expanding since. This is basically the opposite of a black hole. A black hole is also an infinitely dense point in space-time. Rather than spew everything out, though, it draws everything in. Could there be a connection there? Could the formation of a black hole equal the ignition of a new universe inside it? At this point, some readers might raise their hand and say, yeah, but black holes aren't the size of the universe. True enough. A tiny black hole like XTEJ1650500 has an event horizon, an outer rim of 15 miles across. The biggest black hole in existence, the mind-splittingly gargantuan TAN 618, has an event horizon of 262 billion miles across, or 43 times the diameter of our solar system. As absurdly big as that is, the entire universe is about 23 trillion light years across. Even the part we can only see, 1 250th of the entire cosmos, houses 2 trillion galaxies. How could all that be inside a black hole? First off, remember that space is full of lots of just that, space more than matter. But more importantly, remember that all black holes are points. The size of a black hole's event horizon depends on the black hole's mass. More mass equals bigger radius. We can reliably calculate that radius, the Schwarzschild radius, based on the equation written by German physicist Karl Schwarzschild. And insanely enough, if you gathered all the mass of our universe into a single bundle and plugged it into that equation, you'd get a radius that equals exactly the amount of the universe we can see. So. How about the edge of the universe? Is it possible to fly up to the edge of the cosmos and peer out of a one-way black hole mirror and into the universe that our universe nests within? Sadly, no. The universe is expanding so quickly that we could never reach the edge, but more importantly, there is no edge. Because of the open curvature of space-time, our universe is most likely shaped like a donut. Keep going, and you'd loop around to the same spot. And just like how you can't reach the edge of the universe, it's impossible to reach the center of a black hole. But doesn't a black hole suck up everything? Well, yes, but none of what it sucks up reaches its center intact. Objects caught in a black hole's gravity are drawn to a black hole's center at speeds approaching, but not quite the speed of light. As Einstein stipulated through his theory of special relativity, an acclaimed E equals MC squared equation. Time stops for objects moving at the speed of light. An object caught by a black hole won't live forever though. Via a process dubbed spaghettification, objects within a black hole's accretion disk, the distorted space-time shape surrounding its singularity, are molecularly shredded while stuck at near zero time. So, if our universe exists within a black hole that exists within another universe, does that mean that reality is composed of a nested set of universes containing black holes, etc.? As wild as that sounds, yes. If it's true that each black hole contains its own distinct universe, then the true shape of the multiverse is something like a tree that keeps splintering into branches that split into further branches. 
quotes physicist Nikodem Poplowski of the University of New Haven, each black hole represents a one-way door. A trip into a black hole would be a one-way trip that would rock the fundaments of human knowledge, but none of that knowledge could ever be communicated to anyone else. If this is true, then we still run across our original what caused the first universe question or what made God. There are no answers for this. That being said, the black hole universe theory does help us solve a couple of other issues with physics. Namely, it might help explain dark energy. Dark energy is the unknown property that's fueling the expansion of the universe. No one knows what it really is or why the universe not only continues to expand but expands at an accelerated rate. So what if dark energy is caused by matter from outside of our black hole universe getting drawn into the black hole? The matter from outside becomes energy inside and fuels our expansion. This also might help explain the early rapid inflation of the universe following the Big Bang. However, it's worth note that even though the black hole universe theory answers some questions, it raises others. Theory doesn't explain why our universe's initial inflation slowed down. We also don't know how matter from the outside becomes energy inside. Plus, we already mentioned the what caused the initial universe problem. But assuming we can resolve all these issues, it's unlikely we'd ever surmount a final ultimate roadblock. As Big Think outlines, how could we begin to test this all? How could we check to see if we're inside a black hole? We can't approach the universe's edge because there isn't one. If objects entering our universe are spaghettified along the way, we can't exactly chat with an explorer on a one-way trip from our parent universe. Ultimately, we've got two lines of inquiry to investigate. Cosmic microwave background radiation and Hawking radiation. The cosmic microwave background is a palette of evenly distributed, extremely cool cosmic energy left over from the Big Bang. Scientists like Roger Penrose have pointed to cosmic microwave background to say that it contains evidence of a universe that existed before the Big Bang, but he hasn't produced it a lot of hard evidence. Hawking radiation is energy lost by black holes over a long period of time. Would we be able to track such a loss in our own cosmos as energy spills out of it? If not, we might have to accept that not every direct question can find a direct answer. The trail can simply grow cold or disappear. At that point, the most interesting question of all arises. What do you do next? Either way, the study of black holes continues to provide valuable insights into the nature of the universe, challenging our understanding of fundamental concepts in physics. Their existence questions the nature of space, time, and matter itself. Future observations, such as detecting gravitational waves from colliding black holes, promise to further unravel the mysteries of these enigmatic cosmic entities. As we continue to probe the depths of the universe, black holes stand as testaments to the complexity and majesty of the cosmos. They embody the eternal quest for knowledge and the human spirit's insatiable curiosity. In other words, black holes are like the ultimate A-listers of the universe and scientists are the paparazzi trying to snap a picture of them. But it's no easy task. There are many obstacles they face in understanding these elusive celebs, including limited observations. Black holes are notorious for keeping a low profile, emitting no light or radiation. Scientists need to use indirect methods, like observing the behavior of nearby stars and gas, to figure out if a black hole is lurking in the shadows. Difficulty in detection, even with indirect observations, finding black holes is like a game of Where's Waldo in space. They can be tiny, distant, and hard to spot among the stars. Plus, the tools used to locate them need to be super sharp, theoretical models and simulations. Scientists also turn to their imagination to study black holes, using complicated models and simulations to figure out how they work. But these models require a ton of computing power and are always a work in progress. Despite these challenges, Scientists are not giving up on their pursuit of the ultimate cosmic superstar. With the help of advanced technologies and global collaborations, 
we are making significant progress in understanding these enigmatic entities. As we gather more information and observations, we'll unlock even more secrets about the universe's most mysterious objects. In the meantime, let's take a quick look at some of the most astounding characteristics and theoretical possibilities regarding these cosmic oddities. Black holes might have hair. In the 1960s, physicist John Wheeler suggested that black holes have no hair, meaning that each particular cosmic object could only be distinguished from its brethren by its spin, angular momentum, and mass. Any other differentiating information about a black hole is considered hair and is thought to disappear behind a black hole's impenetrable event horizon, a boundary around the black hole beyond which nothing, including light, can escape. Cut to 2016, when famed physicist Stephen Hawking proposed that black holes actually sport an opulent hairdo made of ghostly zero-energy particles, and that this hirsute agglomeration contains information about material the black hole has consumed. This hypothesis has not been proven, but could help solve a long-standing paradox about what happens to gas and dust that has fallen into a black hole's maw. Black holes produce fountains. Nothing is supposed to be able to escape a black hole's powerful gravitational grip, but that only applies to material that has gotten extremely close to the hole's edge. Many black holes are, in fact, surrounded by streams of gas and dust, which circle around the hole like water going down a drain. Friction in this material generates heat, which creates churning, storm-like structures in the gas and dust. Recent observations suggest that this motion also produces arcing rings that surround inner columns of matter, which shoot straight into the air, strongly resembling fountains. Black holes can evaporate. Quantum mechanics provides another way for particles to escape a black hole. According to theory, pairs of subatomic particles are constantly blinking in and out of existence around a black hole's event horizon. Every so often, the configuration is aligned in just the right way to cause one of the partners to fall into the black hole. The particle's identical associate is then propelled away at extremely high speed, robbing the black hole of a tiny bit of energy. This produces what's known as Hawking radiation, after Stephen Hawking, who discovered the phenomenon. Because energy equals mass, this process actually can cause a black hole to shrink and eventually evaporate away over long periods of time. Black holes may be surrounded by a wall of fire. One of the problems with Hawking radiation is that it causes conundrums for physicists. The subatomic particles produced by this radiation are entangled, meaning that what happens to one is immediately felt by the other. So what does the partner that didn't fall into the black hole feel as its associate gets crushed into an infinitely dense point? Nobody knows. One theory holds that the black hole severs the particle's entanglement, an outcome that, according to the laws of quantum mechanics, would produce an insane amount of energy. That, in turn, would mean that all black holes are surrounded by roiling walls of fire. Black hole might scramble information, or not. It's hard to square black holes crushing mass with the laws of quantum mechanics, which hold that information about particles can never be destroyed. But material that slips beyond a black hole's edge should become forever lost to the universe. This conundrum is known as the black hole information paradox. A resolution has eluded scientists to date. Recent research suggests that information that gets scrambled within a black hole could be passed to the outgoing particle partners in Hawking radiation. However, no definitive answer to this paradox has been found. Black holes could be dark matter. Shortly after the Big Bang, the universe should have produced a multitude of tiny black holes. Because these features would be massive objects that give off no light, some physicists have conjectured that these primordial black holes could account for dark matter that mysterious material that the vast majority of matter in the cosmos is made of. But 
The idea is controversial given that data from the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, has ruled out a universe filled with many minuscule black holes. Perhaps medium-sized black holes might still be lurking out there, though observations suggest they would only make up, at most, 1% to 10% of dark matter. Matter may travel to the future in a black hole. Black holes run into the problem of infinity. A black hole's mass is crushed to an infinitely dense point that's infinitely small in size. Physically, this doesn't make any sense. So researchers have searched for alternative frameworks to get a handle on black holes. One proposal is known as quantum loop gravity, which suggests that the fabric of space-time is curved very strongly near the center of the black hole. This would result in part of the hole extending into the future, meaning that matter getting sucked into it would time travel forward. So far, this mind-expanding idea remains theoretical. Scientists might have spotted black holes from another universe. One highly controversial observation suggests that our universe is a latecomer. Earlier universes might have existed before ours and would have contained black holes. Prominent Oxford University mathematical physicist Roger Penrose has argued that cosmic background radiation, an energetic relic from the Big Bang, contains imprints of these black holes from before time. Other scientists have argued that Penrose's data is nothing more than random noise, but the possibility remains intriguing. In short, black holes are like the Mick Jaggers of the universe, the ultimate cosmic rock stars. For centuries, scientists and the public alike have been captivated by these mysterious entities with their mind-bending, gravity-defying powers that continue to leave us in awe. But note that black holes are more than just celestial curiosities. They're the key to unlocking some of the universe's greatest mysteries. As we continue to develop new technologies and gather more observations, the future of black hole research is looking brighter than ever. Indeed, one of the supreme instruments is the James Webb Space Telescope. At the limits of today's observations, we've spotted black holes that are as massive as about 1 1 billion solar masses, a whopping 13.2 billion years ago, when the universe was merely the 5% of its present age. How did those early black holes get so massive so fast? It's not impossible but it certainly is a challenge for our current theories to explain what we see. We would need, for example, a seed black hole of about 10,000 solar masses to form just or 100 million years after the Big Bang, and it would then need to grow at the maximum rate that's physically allowed for the entire time just to get there. Either these black holes started off bigger than our theories expect, or they formed earlier than we realize, or they grow faster than we think they can but that's where James Webb should shed a remarkable amount of light on these dark objects. With its infrared eyes and its position far away in space, James Webb is truly revealing the universe as we've only dreamed of seeing it, rife with tremendous advances and surprises. From on the Earth, we're severely limited by what sorts of light can be transmitted through the atmosphere. We can see optical light very well, but only small fractions of the ultraviolet and near-infrared portions of the spectrum. We can see almost no X-ray or gamma-ray light, and almost no mid-infrared, far-infrared, or microwave light before things become clear in the radio once again. That's the huge advantage of space. Not only do you remove the blurring effects of Earth's atmosphere, but some very important wavelengths of light are completely unobservable from the ground. Hubble provided a remarkable wealth of data, not only in optical wavelengths, but at near-infrared wavelengths as well. The reason Hubble looks like a tin can from up close is because we want it to be cold, to reflect as much of the light and heat that encounters it as possible. Infrared light is what we experience as heat, and we know that if things get hot enough, they'll glow in visible light, red, orange, yellow, or even white to blue, if it's hot enough. Even if you can't see it glowing in visible light, objects like the Hubble Space Telescope do emit substantial amounts of light in the infrared. As a result, despite the reflective efforts that have been made with Hubble, it's only capable of observing out to about 2 microns in wavelength before thermal noise overwhelms the instruments. 
That's why James Webb is so remarkable in a number of ways, at least from an astronomer's point of view. Instead of being located in low Earth orbit, it's located at the L2 Lagrange point, 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. This way, it isn't constantly bathed in the direct infrared glow of Earth's heat. Instead of reflective material, there's a custom-built five-layer sunshield that shields the telescope and instrument side from the sun, passively cooling things down to around $40 Kelvin, as opposed to 200 Kelvin for Hubble. And instead of a mirror configuration, an instrument suite optimized for observing at ultraviolet, optical, and shallow near-infrared wavelengths, James Webb was built to cover a little of the optical, all of the near-infrared, and much of the far-infrared over many wavelength ranges, plus the ability to perform spectroscopy on the entire near-infrared range of wavelengths. James Webb, armed with these capabilities, is capable of seeing galaxies that are too distant, too faint, and whose light has been stretched to too long a wavelength by the expanding universe to be seen by Hubble. And, because black holes accelerate the matter accreting onto them, supermassive black holes can often be seen in radio wavelengths, identifiable as quasars. With its infrared eyes, Webb will be able to pick out the host galaxies that house these quasars, allowing us to match them up at these great cosmic distances for the first time. If we want to understand how black holes grow in the young universe, there's no better tool than Webb for finding out. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.